Just leave it. Hello, 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 podcastos. Welcome to Cy and Dan's Treasure Hunting Podcast. You hammered finding, roaming fine, searching, mud swinging legends. Right, Cy, what's on the go? Yeah, I'm all right, Dan. How you doing, bud? You good? Not too bad, brother. Got some new equipment this week, buddy. What have you got, mate? Oh, mate, um, got me uh, new got sand tra- scoop. Oi, you ain't got trousers, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you filming my legs again? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Stop do, taking pictures of my feet, Dan. Them or what? <laughs> <laughs> I got the well terrier's legs, mate. Oh my god, he beats them, I for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, yeah, I got me old uh, sand scoop, yep. three in one, nice, uh, which looks pretty tasty. Oh, exactly the same as what I got then. Yeah, but you got yours from uh, MD UK Apartheid. There you go. The old raffle. Well done to um, everyone that won. It was on Friday night. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe I won. I was at, we was out on the beach, weren't we? Yeah, we in, the the in the storm. In the storm. I don't know if you've seen the video. Go and have a look. Yeah. I was out on the beach with the world's smallest shovel because I forgot me, uh, forgot me old. Uh, but pic- you were actually filming people, filming themselves doing selfies, weren't you? Yeah, and that the old crazy woman under the cliff. Yeah, that was brilliant, mate. Yeah, legend. Yeah, but- so I won. I won this uh, three and one knocked. Uh, premium sand scoop and then you pressurised me to go and buy one myself no I never well kind of you wanted to <laughs> he was like oh I, I was like oh I should have bought a raffle ticket <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you very much to Ray Laidlaw thank you very much um, yeah uh, yeah get, thank you Ray for uh, sorting you, Dan out there yeah he, he needs it <laughs> <laughs> get yourself over to Ray's party um, raffle um, it runs on a on a, a Wednesday and Friday, was it? Yeah, Wednesday and a Friday. Yeah. At eight o'clock. Um, give them a shout. It hook you up with some tickets. Metal Detecting UK is the YouTube channel, right? That's Dan? right, yeah. yeah. Go onto their Facebook channel as well. Um, Metal Detecting UK. There's loads of interesting stuff on there. And um, yeah, get get involved with the group. Uh, moving on to the next subject. Well, I got me coil as well. I had a bit of a busy day, mate. Another with the other present, mate. You must yeah. be rolling. Oh, my I'm, man I'm, is bowling. I'm bankrupt now, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I got a, I got a great deal uh, from. Shall I mention them? Who's that? Yeah, you can mention them. LP detecting. Yeah. So um, actually, at first, I went to Joan Allen. Okay. And uh, bought yeah. my coil from them, brand new. You know, it's got a, I think a two or three year warranty. Okay. They basically uh, emailed me back about 48 hours later and said, sorry, we're out of stock. So I had a look around and they had a second-hand one, a pre-loved one on LP detecting. Oh, the pre-loved one, was it? Oh, nice. Happy days. We love a pre-loved. <laughs> you can't, I, can't really, I can't really argue because I got same place LP. I got a um, 35 coil from there the other mm-hmm. day. Yeah, it's going all right. Well, I've just been watching back-to-back videos on this coil, mate. It's the ten by five, coil or the mad. five by ten. Uh, the it's small, quite small, isn't the it? small coil, it's really the, small. the coil tech. It's probably the smallest coil, I've and ever also seen. it's for my Knox as well. It's the Knox version. Okay. So just to clear it up for anyone listening. So you need to set that up. You haven't set it up yet, have you? Uh, not yet. I'm just looking at it, man. It's like sitting on my mantelpiece, like a piece of artwork. <laughs> 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 so are you going to use that on the we're going to try and go do a beach beach hunt again then we it was a bit bad the other day it was a write-off absolute write-off yeah well the surging from the the sea man it just kept on coming in even though we went head breakfast didn't we we come back yeah you about, had a hard time sat in the van didn't you mate oh yeah i was laughing my head off <laughs> i'm watching you try and use your excalibur <laughs> That lasted five and a half minutes, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I've ordered a new battery, so that's on its way. I'm happy about that. Oh, yeah. Tell everyone about the battery and your little um, DIY job you try to do. Well, I didn't, I've never took the thing apart before. Um, obviously, I don't advise you to do that, but I didn't realise, because um, I, I, I just use the things, you know what I mean? I never looked too much into it. I didn't realise you could actually take the battery component off individually it's got like three buttons yeah you press the buttons and then so you decided just to dismantle the whole thing oh, yeah the... <laughs> i went going opening what, seals your two thousand pound excalibur yeah, yeah. <laughs> I start opening seals and all that and uh, no luckily i got to the top bit 
and um, I was told not to not to carry on going any further. So yeah, yeah. you're a lucky boy, mate. Yeah, very lucky. Yeah, so it's all good. I've got a new one coming. So and how much? Going did, out. How much did the old uh, the new battery cost new you? New battery was wasn't cheap. One, two, three, hundred twenty three pound for wow. a new battery. But the other one lasts me two years. Uh, the trouble of lithium batteries, they don't they don't really have much of a shelf life. Yeah. Um, they need to be heated, cooled every single day, charged, recharged. Well, what's the NOx and the um, the AUX using? Are they lithium as well? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. yeah. But it's, um, it's it's quite a big old battery on the Scalibur. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure why. A thousand MIs or whatever it is, whatever it's measured in. Yep. So Pro- they, probably milliamps or something milliamps, like that. It, Milliamp yeah. hours. It's a lot of it's it's a lot of money, but if it lasts and it finds me so I am happy. I can't not use it. Mm-hmm. It'd be condemned without it. So. And what's your, your best find with it? My best find with Escalibur is uh chuck me in there. I ain't got a clue. I think it's a gold ring. <laughs> Literally. A gold ring, yeah. Yeah, off the beach. Yeah, that's not too bad, mate. Yeah, it wasn't too big. It was only 18 carat. It wasn't nothing special. I was watching some guys in America, mate. They they got down to the beach. Oh, yeah. And they were using the old sand scoops we were talking about earlier. And yeah. they were just picking out gold rings and well, got silver couple, coins. Like A couple, couple new friends, uh, uh, Vicky and Billy, they, they've gone and found... Uh, they've been out um, doing some detecting on the beach. Oh, yeah, I think I saw them on the group, mate. Mi- yeah, Mr. <laughs> Fox, is, uh, I think they found themselves some gold this this last couple of days i think it was a gold ring is, and is a, a half sovereign i think is that vicky that's put her finds in our competition yes i think uh yeah yeah and how long we got on the competition Dan? we've got next tuesday so get yourself into the competition get subscribing get looking looking sharp get your pictures in we want to see who's got the best haul of this this month and there is a top prize to be to be won um yeah so but bat, battle the ages let's go yeah man yeah. I mean, I've entered the competition, guys. So, You're not uh, allowed to enter the competition, sorry. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but, you, but yeah, you, 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 you're you not allowed. Uh, too late. <laughs> what did you put in? You can't put your buttons in there, mate. I think I put um, my William the Third coin, which had been hit by the plough. Oh, God. So it's... Um, it's a bit of a lousy find. It's definitely a special one for you, that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was special. It I think it was one of my first silvers, mate, so... <laughs> oh, mate, I'm sorry. It means something on. to me. Yeah. <laughs> It's proper bent though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Even though you tried to straighten it as well. <laughs> you know, you're not going to straighten that. You need a pre- Anyone got a press? We need to straighten this coin out. <laughs> so It's quite a thick coin as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Well, yes and no. I mean, it feels, like a si- feels like a 1600s coin. Yeah. The old milled edge. But yeah, shame it wasn't a bit older. So, um... Yeah, uh, just a quick one. If you if you're liking what we're doing, guys, um, on the podcast and on our other videos, pop across um, and uh, go. We got a website now made up. Go across there. Everything's in one place. All the podcasts, all the YouTube videos, uh, run from there. We're going to get some merch up together in a few weeks. Some t-shirts. Going to get button boys written on the back and. Chinese sigh, they're, they're fly out them ones. And the old wobbly head dolls, we're going to get some of them as well. <laughs> Sigh's head on that. <laughs> well, what, what, what colours do you reckon we're going to go for? Well, what colours do you think? Just, just I, I like the orange has, one. Everyone has black. and like, Yeah, know. I think we should be a bit different, man. Let's just go bright and vibrant. I'm happy to go for striped, man. Orange orange and black. Well, like jailbreak. Stripe. Or something really, really obscene, mate. Like, okay. like metallic green pimp suit, you know? Nice. Yeah, that looked yeah. quite cool, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know, mate. Just uh, getting uh, it out there, you know what I mean? I was going to get you like a Chinese gown. Oh, nice. Like like silk one. <laughs> silk one. <laughs> <laughs> Komodo Sai. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Bish Williams' new um, new metal detecting group. Yep. Silos. <laughs> The Silas Metal Detecting Group on Facebook. Yeah. So, what are the Silas? They are Celtic warriors. Yeah, of the the south. They south look like a right vicious bunch, area. don't they? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Get across to see Bish. He's got loads of content on there. We're actually sponsoring them guys at the moment. Um, yeah, Bish. Bish has got a lot of uh, metal detecting friends. Avid, avid metal detectorists finding brilliant stuff all the time. He's going to be putting some bashes on uh, soon uh, with some big digs and some good, good, good events going on. 
So yeah, he's got a lot of knowledge as well. Get your fines on his group, and he's got good, you know? good, good people on there. That's that's that. has got a lot of knowledge as well. You know, yeah. Get across the Soilers. Um, it's a new metal detecting uh, a group that is running now. Uh, we'll put the link below on the podcast and as well on the YouTube. Yeah, they're doing pretty well, Dan. I think they've got around about 500 people plus now. Well, I they, mean, it's... They've it's, only been going about a week or so, yeah. Yeah, man, it's it's definitely... Um, what's the word? Progressing. Uh, it's definitely progressing, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's good. That's brilliant. Yeah, get yourself out to see them, guys. Uh, see what it's all about. They've got some cool facts and stuff like that. And um, any fines that you find or stuff like that, just use between them, MDUK, and and use Bish's site, Silas, and... And uh, yeah, they can help you out with your your coin finds or your your artifacts there. Of course, as well, we've got our new sponsors. We've got uh, Scuba Blue. Yeah. So if you guys want to get your scuba diving on, Look, contact more Scuba Blue. There's places to find treasure. It's not just on the land. Exactly. Let's get to the agua. Let's get <laughs> to the water, guys. Just don't dismantle your scalibers. No. <laughs> and make sure they're sealed up before you go. <laughs> yeah. And what was the um, asset Digware? Digware we're we're, get, we're going to get some of our merchandise from these guys, Digware UK. Yeah, um, have a look at their site. Michael Bullock, get get hold of this 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 geezer. He's got a lot of merchandise. Um, it's, yeah, it's good quality stuff. They do a whole range of like camo stuff, don't they? And all sorts, yeah. Flask, it's you know it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, get yourself. But just have a look at it, guys, and uh, see what you think. Really friendly bunch as well. They're they're they're, they're there to help. Plus, if anyone's interested in some of our merch. Once we've got um, uh, examples... We'll, put, we'll bang them on the website. We'll put them on our Facebook group, and then if anyone's interested in them, just let us know. And we're the wobbly probably, head size. We'll be taking pre-orders for that as well. You know, the old dashboard ones. Yeah, <laughs> the nodding dogs. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's <laughs> Janice. It's Janice, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So we're going to talk a bit about the Knights Templar today, a bit of historical knowledge. Uh, pushing forward with that, we're gonna t- we're gonna talk about the the, the fellow soldiers of Christ uh, in the Temple of Solomon, also known as the Order of Solomon's Temple, the Knights Templar, or simply the Templars. But well, what's the difference between a uh, a Templar and a Crusader? You tell me, Sai. Well, I think um, the Crusader is obviously someone who went to the Crusades. That's right. Yeah, and the Templar. The Templars came after the First Crusade. They weren't actually in the First Crusade. Yeah. So um, the the Templars, I think, obviously are a military order to do with the Catholic Church. Yeah. But they are more monk-like. It started off, but they weren't allowed to have property. They weren't allowed to receive private letters. Um, the, 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 the knight himself, he couldn't be married or befrothed. Um, they couldn't have a vow on any other order. Yeah. It was just literally a hundred percent dedicated to the order, and um, yeah, they're fascinating. Yeah, fascinating I think they took order. an oath of poverty, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I try not to take an oath of poverty anymore. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, you, of that. you will when you just bought your coil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the knights of prosperity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, after uh, crit. Christianity, um, the forces conquered Jerusalem <coughs> in uh, 1099. Europeans began making pilgrims to the Holy Lands by the droves, and on the way were often attacked by bandits or even crusading knights. Uh, that Their aim was to protect travellers and help defend a new Christian state in the Middle East. A small group of fighters formed the poor knights of the Temple of King Solomon, otherwise known as the Knights Templar. Over the next two centuries, the order became a powerful political and economical force across Europe, making history in such dramatic fashion that some people yep. are still trying to emulate them today. Um, yeah. Well, what, what's interesting as well is you've got uh, the guy called uh, Hugh, Hugh de Paines, who was the guy who originally founded yep. the Templars, right? So he's gone to the First Crusade. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 1096 to 1099. Yeah. He's obviously then gone back to France after the Crusades. Yeah. And um, he's decided to go back to Jerusalem with his uh, colleagues, I guess. I guess his, well, his acquaintances, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, there was uh, eight of them, wasn't there? Was there eight or nine yeah, of them? Yeah, I think it was eight, but I, I read something else which said there was 30 of them. Yeah, it changes. But, but poss- all, possibly all that was just what happened in Jerusalem. They maybe recruited some more people. A lot of them were, fa- they were his family members as well, weren't they? Yeah. And, the and founders. And associates. Yeah. Of, but yeah, I mean, when he when he got back there, um, I think it was King Baldwin II. That's right. Um, there was a lot of issues with, like you said, with pilgrims getting attacked. Yeah. I think the Benzentine Empire had his issues with the Turks at the time. Yeah. Um, and King, uh, sorry, Emperor Alexios II, or yeah. the first, he basically contacted the Pope and asked for military assistance. So it's um, it's one of those things, isn't it, where the, the Popes then said, cool, we'll give you some assistance. The Pope has then rallied everyone in Europe to get out to the Holy Lands. Yeah, to push uh, them out there, yeah. I think he called it an armed pilgrimage. Hugh, Hugo Paynes has gone back out there. He's now uh, been asked by Baldwin II to um, kind of protect the city or protect the the province that he's in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of how it all kind of started. But, of course, that's just like the real... Or the real origins of it all. That was just the, the origins. The of Templars it. exploded, didn't they, in, it, the, in the financial world? That's it, when they invented banking. They yeah. were the first people to invent banking. So they would be passed, uh, they would never use or... They say a tra- car- a, They wouldn't carry cash. A traveller's check. Yeah. So basically, there would be outposts on a, on, a, on a way of a Knights Templar. So say we were going to X, Y. Then on that route, you would have stop-off points. Yeah, and on them stop off points, you would have a letter of 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 the order. You would give out the 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 symbols or whatever you had, and then that's how they would be paid. Do you yep. know what I mean? or they would have to collect back to their th- th- their place of lie. Yeah, apparently you could, you could kind of say if you were in Paris or somewhere in yep. Europe, you could basically get a note from the Templars there. Yeah, go out to Jerusalem. Yeah. So if you want a pilgrimage and didn't want to get robbed of all your of all your money on travel, and the moment you got into Jerusalem, you handed that into the, I suppose it would have been the Temple of yeah. Solomon, yeah. and uh, they would have reimbursed you the same amount that you've given to the Templars in in Paris or England or wh- wherever you were. A credit note. Yeah. Yeah. So the Knights Templars first credit card. I'm sure they took their fee though. Oh, I, oh, I don't know. Well, they it must was, have must have done something. They, they would have got paid for the ride. I would have thought. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, would, it just exploded after that. Um, and then in the 12th century, Muslim soldiers uh, retook Jerusalem and turned the tide for the crusade, forcing the Knights Templar to relocate uh, quite a few times, I think so. It was interesting because, um, I mean, the Muslims had been in control of Jerusalem, I think, for a few yeah. hundred years yeah, it was. before this crusade. But I don't think it was the that same uh, band of people. I think it was the... Um, who are they? The Moors. The Moors, yeah. yeah. Um, they were the one that were causing all the problems. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. That, that's where all the friction come about. Well, the, yeah, the, the military campaigns in the Holy Land began um, to massively dwindle the Templars. Uh, the popularity met the same fate as they clashed with other Christian military orders, you know, and it uh, participated in a series of massive, unsuccessful battles. Mm-hmm. Which, um, yeah, in 1303, the Knights, they lost their foothold in the Muslim world yeah. and established a base of operations back in Paris. Uh, I, I suppose, and like. That's where it went. It started going really, really, really not in a good way for them. I suppose, as you say, as they kind of invented the first real banking system, they also invented the first real charity. Yeah. Because they would go back and rally. And try and get donations, yeah, and um, repair, try and raise build, money, rebuild uh, places, hospitalers, yeah, because the Knights Templar had the hospitalers as well, which were the, the Knights herself, and they used to look after the people with uh, diseases like the the, the lepers, lepers yeah. uh, and, and and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, and obviously, when I think it was King Philip, he resolved to bring down the order. Um, Nasty. I think nasty it was Louis. Kid. Louis. King Louis Philip the Fair the f- racked up a hell of a bill. Yeah. They were borrowing money off the Templars, weren't they, yeah. to fund his campaigns and his his castles and lavish parties. And he decided, oh, I actually don't want to pay this back. No. <laughs> and, and and after f- uh, facing initial criticism, 
by the religious leaders in 1129, the, the Knights received the formal endorsement of the Catholic Church and support of Bernard of Clavois, yeah. a prominent abbey. Mm-hmm. Uh, new recruits and lavish donations began pouring in from across Europe. Though the Templars themselves took vows of poverty, the order could accure wealth and land. So basically they were living in squalor to make make lives better for everyone else. Yeah. Which yeah. is really nice, isn't it? And there's not much of that these days, is there, going on? No, not really, man. Yeah, we can we can talk about the Knights Templars for hours, let's be honest, but what do we want to get down to? We want to get down to the nitty-gritty, the bad boy treasure that has gone missing. Where oh, yeah. did it go? Where did it all go? There was absolutely tons and tons of Knights Templar wealth that got disappeared over time. Um, it and, all depends what you mean by treasure, though, Dan. I'll be talking about gold coins. I'll be talking about talking, precious stones. We're talking about the relics and stuff. Yeah, like religious that. artifacts yeah, and stuff, yeah. right? So I know that I know the Templars. They supposedly were in um, possession of the the Shroud of Turin. Yeah, I heard of that. That's amazing. Yeah, which is supposedly is meant to be the cloth, cloth. that Jesus, Jesus. Christ yeah, yeah. wore when he was dead. Yeah, um, in the in the the tomb. That's so cool. So uh, yeah, I mean they've got that kind of stuff, or they had that kind of stuff. I, you know, it's um, uh, but yeah, they, I suppose um, uh, when you look into what they actually had in wealth, they estimate that their treasure was over a billion dollars. I think it's more than that to well, these days. Well, yeah, I think it's yeah. just an estimate. I mean, they don't really know, but uh, there's a few interesting things. Um, for instance, uh, when King Louis decided to turn against the Templars, right? Okay. He um, sent out like dawn raids, and a couple of these guys managed to escape. And supposedly had taken a lot of the treasure. Possibly, I would think maybe the holy relics, because you think about how much gold and silver and everything weighs. Massive. Amount. What you're going to take? You're going to take the holy grail, aren't you? And you're yeah. going to take the shroud of Turin. You're going to take the relics. You're going to yeah. take the, the the prized possessions that mean to to the most to your order. Yeah, of course. I mean, these guys were. I mean, is it safe to say that they were fanatical? I, would, I would, you, would you no, say that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say fanatical. I, I I reckon. Well, they, they didn't have iPads or iTunes or anything. No, I mean, but they 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 cared about the one thing. Yeah, and it yeah was, of course, it was balance. Yeah, not fanatical in a bad way. No, um, in a good way. They wanted to make peace and they wanted to bring corruption and order to normality. You know, mm-hmm. there was too much. Uh, t- there's too much uh, malicious stuff going on. There was. There's almost as well. You've got like the likes of famine and poor and disease and yeah, and there wasn't enough help, and they were set up to to take on and and change the world for the better, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, that, but on the treasure side of things, well, th- this this thing which um, what happened with these guys is supposedly the the myth is these guys went to the west somewhere, yeah. and of course we've got. Um, places in France uh, called Gazora, Gazora. Uh, a big fortress there, which has its own little sub-story. Yeah. Uh, there was also um, Oak Island, which of course is famous because of uh, you know what's on TV at the moment with the Lagina brothers. Yep. Um, and of course, you were saying to me about um, you uh, got you got Hamilton White, Hamilton White. Yeah. Yep. You got the Hamilton White and um, his his friend uh, Carl Cookson. Because they trace the origins of the amazing relics. That know? is a really good program, Dan. It's, it's on Sky History. You can yep. actually go across onto Sky History and watch that program. There's not many episodes, have you noticed? I think there was only three episodes. Yeah. I wanted I, more. I, I think one was more. about Nazi gold. That's there was right. another one about uh, a Celtic, uh, Celtic, Celtic. Uh, gold. Yep. And uh, I think the first one was about a Templar horde. Yeah. And that's the one really, which is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, there's a sword... They got a sword, a chalice. Um, well, they, well they, they, those lads, they used to buy and sell since they were kids. Yeah. And they, they used to buy and sell art, artifacts since they were kids. So their teeth were right into it. They knew what they were looking for. Um, like, and they, they, they went for it. And it, it shows you on the, the documents how, how, how clever they are. They are really talented blokes. Yeah. And they really know their yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and you they, should see the guys, uh, his little museum he has in his house. 
Yeah. I mean, it's sensational what he's got in there. Yeah. Mate. Yeah, if we had that in our house, we'd be getting the police. Answer. <laughs> it would be gone overnight. I um, do wonder, has he declared it all to flow, though? Or No. But the, the, my best episode was they went down to uh, Tumar in Portugal, um, and it was a, a former temple stronghold, and um, it was split the up uh, the individual items sold to the collectors over the world, Hamilton and Cole. Um, yeah. They pieced back together this treasure trove, uh, it, it was believed to be lost um, the first items of the hoard and in the show uh, w- where uh, there was a black chalice and a Templar sword and a, yeah. a, I think it was a, a like a small vessel um, and these items of the hoard as a whole representing Cole's world in episodes in the first episode it was the most significant find since Tutan Carmoon. Well, well, if I remember correctly... On just one little trip to Portugal. I think each of the items, though, were, yeah. were brought separately, and the, the hoard which he put back together... That's right. ...was um, talked about in some kind of uh, documents was, or something from, you know, ancient times. Massive like A few times, hundred yeah. years back, they were talking about this hoard, and then he's managed to track it, all the individual bits back and reunite the hoard. It's amazing. Um, it's outstanding. Yeah, and I think the sword was meant to be like a Grand Master sword or, or something was. crazy. And yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's so much history there. I just it, want to go there. Are we going there? <laughs> let's get the diving on. Let's, let's get, get him on the podcast, the... Dan. What are we doing? Let's... Yeah, we ain't big enough for that. Well, if... Oh, we if, can plague him until he says yes. <laughs> well, if Mr. Cookson, Mr. White, if you're about, you want to come on the show? Yeah, let's talk you about, just let us know, mate. Let's talk about uh, t- your Templars uh, uh, artifacts and finds. Like, Bring amazing. him down. We'll have yeah. a look at him as well. Amazing stuff, amazing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, with this treasure, I mean, obviously we've got different kinds of Templar treasure, haven't we? Because we've got that hoard, yeah. but that was obviously uh, what the Templars were wearing and using at the time. So now that's considered relics and treasures to Res us. to us, yeah. But what were the relics and treasures to them? To them. You know what I mean? So uh, they must have had, I think, the, the uh, Bible, um, some kind of Bible and... <laughs> All sorts of stuff. Yeah. You've got like the first printed Bible, possibly. You've got you've got um, Pandora's box. Who knows? <laughs> it's all going to be there. Uh, and and this stuff is lost. Do you know what I mean? And well, we're well, speaking of like Pandora's box, right? I mean, then we've got to talk about Oak Island. Yeah. I mean, I know you haven't watched it that much, but I just I, it's, I'm not not slating it. It just. I can see a deal and, and not a deal. I can see what they're after. I, can, I understand that. But, man, it's long doubt. When yeah. I first, the first episode, I was like, right, yeah, yeah, it's good, I'm involved. But then all of a sudden, I'm just like, I'm, I'm blanking from it. Whereas, well, well, I found it quite fishy, right? Because I think it was about the fifth or sixth season. Yeah. One of the brothers, they all go off to France. They all go to Paris That's to see right. a Templar. Possibly they were in... Um, Jazora. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I can't remember the actual place, but it was they were in the Templar prison, wherever the Templars were kept in prison. Yeah, and of course he's come back uh, after you know doing their little documentary, and then they find a cross on the beach, which looks exactly like the cross which was on the wall in the prison in Paris or in France, okay. which I find highly suspicious because you've just been in France, where possibly you could walk into an antique shop and buy this stuff. Yeah, and then they just happen to find one on the beach in Oak Island. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So, I mean, that's that's suspect to me. I'm not, I'm not slating them, but it's no, a, no, of course. I know stuff's dramatized, you know, and but it's not like they don't have enough money to go and buy a no. relic. No, exactly. if they wanted to, I mean, how much money are they getting from the Discovery Channel? Sorry, the History Channel. Yeah, yeah, and like obviously, like like places like Le Temple, which is obviously the the prison in France, you would like to think that they would have held on to the majority of that stuff and it would have gone back into the the, the crown or whatever. Well, the, the only thing that links Nova Scotia um, was the word Arcadia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, is not... Was which it, was what they used for Nova Scotia at the time what, and yeah. it's it's on some kind of painting or... It was on a... I thought it was on a stone, wasn't it's it? Like, yeah, it's like a cryptic clue people have looked yeah. at. Um, so that's kind of what ties it in there. And then, of course, with the origin story of what they found on Oak Island, yeah. with the the wooden, um, I don't know what you want to call it, trap door, which they they dug up and then they dug nine metres down and then they dug a, uh, found another trap door yeah. and they kept on going down until the they got like this stone with some writing on. 
like ancient writing. Okay. And um, yes, then supposedly they broke through that seal, and then the whole thing flooded. I so think, I think I think you find I, I I don't think it's New Scotland. I think it's Scotland. Yeah, well, there's the, there's the <laughs> cathedral. Is it cathedral or abbey or yeah. the Templar Abbey up there? Uh, it's supposedly got all this paranormal stuff happening. There's always UFOs and stuff being spotted around there. <laughs> a few years back when I was into the old UFO programs, I mean, they it was like a big thing. People were going up there filming things all the time. Yeah. But I think the um, that was built by three Templars, wasn't it? Yeah. It's like there's loads of weird stuff. Like they reckon that Christopher Columbus was like he, he was had access to the the world maps and stuff through the vatican which obviously was held by the order at the time yeah so he was obviously helping them and they were helping them guide so it could quite possibly they 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 went on journeys on that voyage and to to nova scotia i don't know i don't know the facts as like i said you can go a lot on on this, this, this. I think, um, well, I have a little theory about Nova Scotia. Yeah. I, I believe it was probably more pirate based. Yeah. I reckon the pirates were out there. And because when you look at um, Oak Island and where it is, I mean, it's right on the tip. It's right in the cove as well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there was obviously military there at one point, but yeah. the military weren't, you know, it's possibly 18th century, 1700s, you know, from there. But when you've got the privateers and all that kind of stuff. I think that's when possibly the island's going to be used. I mean, I did see a thing where they were talking about the coconut husk, which has been found yep. going into these drains, which supposedly is meant to be the trap. And they've been dated back to the 6th century. That's quite old. Six AD, uh, 600 yeah. AD. So, um, I mean, who knows? And until they've done a bit more investigation, I was hoping the Lagina brothers were going to dig the whole thing out, mate. Uh, it was not going to happen. Oh, I think they should, man. It's not going to happen. Do you know why? <laughs> Because the government's going to stop them. Yeah, and not only that. <laughs> Especially the Canadian government at the moment, They want to <laughs> feed you slowly, do you know what I mean? And that's yeah, what course. I didn't like about it. It was just, with the, with the Mr. Hamilton, and it, it was it was true and raw facts. Yeah. Know? And it was there in front of you. And it was their passion, really. Not three on, hours on... chucking dye down a drain and waiting for it to come out and go, <laughs> oh my God. It's already dinner time. Well, you say that, I think in the second <laughs> season, he throws a dollar down one of the holes. Yeah, that's right. And I think the last season, they pulled it back out. Yeah. So it's taken eight years to get that coin back out. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. No. Like, amazing. No. No. <laughs> I Cheers, guys. watch it again. But yeah, cool. That's some cool treasure facts. And that is some facts about the, the Templar, the Order. Yeah. Amazing people. We've, and um, yeah. It's we've really also good. got the old uh, story about the, the fortress in Gizor. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, I think it was 1929. We've got a, a chap called Roger Le, Labour. And uh, he was kind of obsessed with the, the building and the architecture. And he's basically turned around and said to them, I want to dig and look for these supposedly hidden treasures. So they've said to him, go ahead. If we find something, we'll worry about it when you find something. And um, of course, he worked there for the, the period leading up to the war and the war. Yep. And as the Germans invaded, they took the castle but he still worked there and he was still looking the whole time. And uh, supposedly after the second world war, he, f he had dug a shaft and had found supposedly what he, what he called a chapel room filled with big caskets, um, really? which, which he thought was full of treasure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know nothing about this. Yeah. And, uh, but basically what, what happened in the end was he called the local authorities. Okay. They said, Oh, the hole's unsafe. But a fireman tried to go down there, right. the chief of the fire brigade or whatever, yeah. and he ended up throwing a coin down there and said, no, there is a void there, there is a cavity. But no one went in and checked uh, this the chapel room, which he said, yeah. which he claimed was there. Ah, uh, this then, is the one that they destroyed. Yeah, but then, but then they filled it all back in because they said right. it was unsafe. Yeah. And then he, then they, he got sacked and basically got told to bugger off. Because yeah. he was fleeting it out the back door, wasn't he? I, I don't know, but then in the 60s, the, the French government turned around and said, oh, we're going to send the army in to dig this thing up. Yeah. And they sent the army in. They spent months digging this stuff up. Okay. And uh, then turned around and said, oh, yeah, uh, we didn't find anything. Yeah, yeah, it's e gone. Even though they had truckload after truckload yeah. going in and out. And yeah, there was I loads of eyewitnesses it. saying, no, they definitely got something. Uh, but, yeah, they said there's nothing there. And... Um, 
I wonder how much he got paid out. But they filled it back in. It was like case closed. Of course, I mean. gone. <laughs> Treasure gone. I wonder where that is. That's gone. Maybe in Brazil or South America. I, I, I always watch a documentary where they are actually up in the, looking for the Nazi gold. Okay. Uh, and I think I believe a lot of it's to do with that as well. A lot of this stuff in the Second World War and First World War was all buried across uh, throughout Brazil and stuff like that. You know. Well, we all know of like wars and conflicts. I mean, if for instance the Nazis had found some of this stuff, yeah. they would have melted it down, yeah, and turned it back into basically they would have put their own symbols on and made it into their own bullion, yeah, yeah. which then they would have traded with other countries. Yeah, we can't go pointing fingers though, Sai. No, of course we're in a, a a very precarious world we live in at the moment, and <laughs> we're not blaming you, but give us our gold back. <laughs> <laughs> Give the gold back. <laughs> but yeah, it's all cool. Well, who knows where it is though, Dan? And uh, maybe one day someone will find it. Yeah. And I mean, that would be an amazing thing to go and see at a, a museum or something. I mean, you showed me an article about Henry VIII. Henry VIII. And a little, in peace. a little piece of his crown, which was found two, by a detectorist um, a couple of years back, 2017. Yeah, two, he found it around a tree, detector, and yeah. And they estimated that to be two million pounds. Two mil. Yeah, I mean, that's... So, what, so what do you reckon? What a crown is. Yeah, 20 mil? Priceless. No, priceless. Anyway, guys, it's been a long, long old podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, please come like and subscribe. Can't tell you enough how happy we are that you come and listen to us. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on the next podcast or the next dig. If you want to come and enter our competition, that's over on Facebook. Uh, sign Dan, Treasure Hunting on, or Sign Dan Dig come across onto there the, the 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 links are down below and you can put in your picture of your best find of this month and then we are going to rate it at the end and there's going to be a good old prize to be given out which we'll let you know on the sunday i think it's the 12th isn't it um i think so yeah <laughs> we'll be letting you know maybe you should that. just tell them now what's the prize dan no, i'm not telling you the prize you sure that's the star prize Oh, yeah. so it's going to be something decent. A wobbly-headed sigh. Uh, no, everyone needs to get out of there. <laughs> ain't going to be really. But yeah, thank you for listening. Cheers, Sai, for, for, for today. Um, yeah, no worries, Dan. It's all cool, mate. Yeah. I've enjoyed it, man. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope everyone listening's enjoyed it. And uh, peace out, people. Take care. Au revoir. <laughs>